The important things to talk about this morning, as well as Fraggle Rock, the increasing cost of living is something we've been hearing a lot about over recent weeks. And we'll actually get the official update today on how fast prices are rising in about the next half hour or so. Well, Ben is looking at all of this for us this morning. He's at the market in Skipton. Morning, Ben. Oops. Very good morning. morning. Yes, here at Skipton Market, they are getting ready for the day ahead. And as you say, we're going to find out how much average prices for the goods and services that we all typically spend our money on, how much those have gone up in the last 12 months. And you've probably noticed whether you're buying cakes, whether you're buying cheese, whether you're buying biscuits or chutney, the prices have gone up because as things currently stand, what we know is that inflation has been at its highest rate for 10 years. It stood at 5.1% in November. So that means average prices were 5.1% in, in higher in November than they were 12 months before. Now, economists think generally, most of them, that it will go up even higher. The Bank of England, for example, expects inflation to hit 6% by the spring. Now, that is significantly higher than the Bank of England's target of 2%. And all of that is causing a rise, a jump in the cost of living for households right across the UK. And that's largely being driven by increasing fuel and energy costs. People have noticed that on their household bills, but businesses are facing it as well. Add to that shortages of materials to make things, that makes them more expensive, and a shortage of workers, meaning they have to put average wages up uh, to attract people to do the job. That all gets passed on to us as customers, which is why prices go up. And that is all coming on top of higher energy prices that people are paying at home. Now, the big problem is that average pay rises are not keeping up with inflation. The average weekly rise was 3.8% in the three months up to November. That is below inflation. So if your wages are rising more slowly than the things you buy, that means you feel a pinch in the cost of living. It means that your money, your pay packet, isn't going as far as it once did. Let's speak about all of this in more detail. We've got with us here down at Skipton, Catherine Shuttleworth, who is a retail analyst. Catherine, good morning to you. Good morning. Just how much um, pressure is this putting on businesses? We know the pressure it's putting on households. Uh, what effect is it having for, for businesses up and down the UK? Oh, huge pressures because, of course, all those cost increases you just talked about, particularly in energy, are really driving prices up for businesses. And they've got to pass those on through the supply chain. And ultimately, the last person in that chain is, is us, the customer. So those prices are going up. There's shortages. Uh, you know, there's still shortages in certain parts of employment. So things like drivers exactly, and things like that you talked about, but their, pro their wages have gone up massively over the last 12 months. And all those little increases along the supply chain mean that things that we want to buy are going up. And we're really starting to notice that in our purses when we go shopping. Um, if uh, businesses didn't put prices up, what would happen? Well, they'd end up having to lay people off because they just can't keep up with this speed of increase in their own cost base. So if they don't put those prices up, they won't make any money. If they don't make any money, they can't pay their staff, and it's that simple, really. So we're not used to this level of inflation in the UK, particularly in the food that we buy. So this is coming as a bit of a nasty surprise to many of us. Uh, would it be an option for companies, for businesses and shops to pay their workers a little bit more, perhaps, to help them with the cost of living? They're going to try to, but they've got to keep a hold on the costs. And the thing is that as these, as these rises spiral, even if you have given your workers a pay rise of 3 or 4%, it may be that that's not going to be enough and they're still going to feel as though those increases in their salaries aren't really being adjusted back when they're going shopping and they're paying their bills. So I think that businesses do want to give pay rises, but obviously they've got to manage those to manage their own costs and remain profitable and be able to keep on giving out jobs. And what sort of things would help businesses at a time like this? Well, I think there's a huge crisis around fuel. You know, we talk about it from a domestic perspective, but it's even worse if you've got a business because there are no caps on that. So I think the energy companies and the government are going to have to think about how those costs are smoothed out. So perhaps there's help over the next five years to smooth that out so we pay for it. But instead of paying for it all up front, we're paying for it over a period of time. And they're the sorts of things that will make a really big difference. OK, Catherine, as ever, thank you very much. Catherine Shuttle with their retail analyst. Now, let's go back to Dave Stuhl, guys. And uh, he's promised me uh, a good deal on whatever you want. So pick something and I'll bring it back for you as a little treat. Ben, thanks very much indeed. Look at all that fabulous cheese, Walker. You That's can, your heaven, isn't it? Well, I'd get lost in there. You could make a 
serious cheese board out of that. Business. I love a cheese board. He's got on little this crackers behind him as well. Well, within the last few moments, we have had official confirmation of the scale of those price rises. Inflation was 5.4% in December. That is the highest rate since 1992. That's more than double the target set by the Bank of England and shows just how serious the squeeze is on people's cost of living. Well, if you've been watching for the last hour, you know that Ben is at Skipton for us today in the market there and, and can bring us some more information on this breaking news. Ben. Yes, good morning from Skipton Market, where the traders are getting ready for the day ahead, including at this fruit and veg stall. And that figure uh, will resonate with so many of them, with the traders and the people coming here to buy their goods. 5.4% inflation stands at. Uh, that's the figure for December. That's how much average prices have gone up compared with 12 months before. And it covers all sorts of things from uh, fresh fruit and veg to clothing to cinema tickets to fuel. And that really is being felt by households already. It's being driven by the increasing costs of electricity and gas. Of course, businesses are facing those higher costs as well, as well as a shortage of drivers. So they're having to pay more to attract people to take on that work. All of that gets passed on to us as customers. Let's have a brief chat to uh, Dominic, who runs the stall here. Dominic, are you noticing prices go up for the stock that you buy? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, obviously, at the minute, it's very seasonal for your berries, you know, your strawberries and your blueberries, raspberries, they're all coming from overseas. So as you mentioned with the HGV drivers, that cost is going up on that because everything's being driven in. And can you absorb it or are you having to pass that on and charge your customers more? It's a bit of both for me because obviously with it being a market, I've got to try and price match the best I can to obviously supermarkets, Aldi and Lidl being the cheapest. Uh, so most of that, my margins get squeezed. So a little bit falls on me, but my customers are you know, very understanding of it at the minute. OK, Dominic, thank you very much indeed. So just to recap that breaking news, inflation, the figure we've had just out in the last few minutes, it stands at 5.4% uh, for December. That is the highest it's been since 1992. Thank you for that, Ben. We'll speak. It's Wednesday, the 19th of January. The UK's cost of living surged by 5.4% in December. That's a breaking news this morning, the highest annual rate of increase for almost 30 years. Energy costs and the price of food and drink drove the rise, which was higher than economists had been forecasting. The Chancellor said he understood the pressures people were facing and that the government was providing support. Now, Ben has been looking at this for us. He's in a market in Skipton. Morning, Ben. Yeah, very good morning and welcome to Skipton Market, where they've been busily getting ready for the trading day ahead. Now, this news about inflation hitting 5.4% in December is something they know all too well the traders and the customers. It means the cost of things like food, like clothing, but also things like cinema tickets and train tickets is all going up. Now, this is the fastest rate that they've been rising now for nearly 30 years. And as you say, it's been largely driven by a rise in the cost of energy and fuel. People will have noticed that on their household bills. Well, businesses are facing exactly the same increased costs. So if the uh, factories and, and, and uh, places manufacturing goods are facing higher costs, they have to pass that on to the traders like Dominic here. And uh, in turn, for his business to stay viable and to be able to uh, pay wages, he then has to pass that on to customers. Now, one of the other things that's adding to the problem is uh, a shortage of drivers to move produce around the country. Because of that shortage, pay is having to go up to attract people to do those jobs. And again, that ends up being passed on to us as customers. The big problem is that average wages are not keeping up with the increase in average prices. So put simply, if your wages are not going up as quickly as the price of the goods that you're buying, you will start to notice that. You'll be noticing it already in a squeeze on your household budget and the cost of living. And thanks very much. The cost of living has risen at its fastest pace for nearly 30 years by 5.4% in the UK. Yeah, this is something that Ben has been looking at us, uh, looking at for us throughout the morning. Uh, the latest inflation figures, and he's at a market in Skipton. Morning, Ben. Good morning. Yes, welcome to Skipton Market, where Dominic and the other traders are getting ready for the day ahead. And they are already noticing that rise in the cost of living. As we've been saying, it hit 5.4% in December. That is the highest rate of inflation 
for nearly 30 years. And uh, economists think it could go even higher than that. The Bank of England is predicting it could hit 6% by the spring. Now, that is significantly higher than the bank's target of 2%. What's causing uh, all of this? Well, uh, the effect it's having is a, a, a jump in the cost of living, but it's being caused by the high fuel and energy costs that households are already grappling with. That is affecting businesses as well. So to produce goods like this, food, fruit, veg, groceries, but also clothes and, and other things that we spend our money on, uh, it's costing more. So the manufacturers, the producers charge more to traders like uh, Dominic here and others are in the market. They then have to grapple with passing that on to their customers. So we're being told to expect price rises for everyday goods, for the things that we are buying. And the big problem is that average wages are not keeping up with average price increases. The latest average wage uh, data shows they were going up by 3.8% uh, per week. Uh, weekly, uh, weekly wages were going up 3.8% in the three months to November. And that is uh, well behind inflation. So that is what is causing a big cost of living squeeze. Now, we've been at the fruit and veg stall uh, for much of the morning. But if you've got a slightly sweeter tooth, take a look at the neighbouring stall. This could be the one for you. The finest fudge coat. Just have a look. Take a closer look at all the different varieties they've got here and how tempting they all are. The people who run this stall, who own this business, are Tom and Mariah. Um, have you guys noticed the increasing costs for things that you buy to run your business? Definitely. Um, even in the last week, we've had two emails from suppliers saying that obviously costs are going up 5% across the board. Um, and that's something that we've seen already. So. And when you're paying more for things, are you having to put your prices up for customers? We have had a conversation about it, but it's something that we're going to try and avoid if we can. Uh, but it might be something for the future. In the future, yeah. Okay, and do you think people will understand or do you worry that you might lose customers and your business will struggle? Uh, I think people do like our fudge, but I do think over the long term it's not going to help anything. Uh, we could do with a little bit more help, maybe, of something, I don't know. Okay, um, and, and you've been running your business for, what, two years? And this, uh, have you noticed recently the price is going up more sharply? Definitely, especially with things like fuel and that kind of thing, but we can't get away with it. But we have looked to obviously speak to manufacturers and that kind of thing, uh, just to try to bring the cost down for us, rather than get them from distributors and wholesalers. So, Okay, and um, just before I go, best flavour you do? Marza Maltese. Right, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to some of that a little bit later. Tom, Mariah, thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. Let's find out what all of this means for people's household bills and cost of living. We can speak to Peter from the Joseph Roundtree Foundation. Um, Peter, what does this mean for people uh, day to day? Yeah, I think everybody's going to notice this. All items in the CPI basket are going up, and so all people's items are going to go up. And I think what we're worried about is those of the lowest incomes who won't be able to absorb those prices and are already struggling. So, yeah, we really do think something you know, has to be done to help them. And this, of course, comes at a time where it's not just prices in the shops are rising for people. Households are already dealing with higher electricity bills, higher gas bills. Uh, it's cost more to fill up the car. There's, it feels like there's a real cost of living squeeze at the moment. Is that what you're hearing from I people? I think so. And we're also thinking that benefits aren't going to rise enough at the, the next time around. They'll be lagging inflation quite high. And I really do think that there's something the government can do in terms of emergency support to cope with this big rise in April and also just generally sort of, you know, what, what can people be doing for low-income households. And what would, you, what would you like to see the government do to help people, as you, say, as you say, the people who are struggling the most, the people who are least well off? Yeah, so we do think like a, a, a one-off payment to cope with, particularly the big rise in April, it's not something that anybody can kind of factor in the wholesale price of gas. It's not something you can sort of factor into your budget and we think the government should be helping people at that, at that time. And, and the other thing that, that people notice is um, uh, this is coming at a time when uh, in April they'll be paying more in national insurance, uh, rail fares go up in March. This seems to be right across the board and, and really impact people's quality of life. Yeah, that's what we're hearing, sort of really stressful situations. And, yeah, I think that's it. And I think people, yeah, we, we do need to sort of just help people through that situation as much as we can. OK, Peter, thank you very much. Peter there from the Joseph Roundtree Foundation. Um, let's just come back to this store where we started off because uh, it is uh, a real concern for people. I mean, 
Dominic here, let's uh, just have a quick chat. Dominic, um, have you had to put prices up for the goods that you sell to your customers? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, like I said before, um, with it all coming in overseas, there has got to be a slight increase on some stuff, especially the fruit. And there are customers that have been coming to you for years, I imagine. Yeah. Are they noticing it? Are they saying to you, hang on, why has this gone up so much today? Yeah, but like I said, they're the very understanding in that respect. I'll tell them, obviously, the situation that we're, that we're up against. And uh, like I said, they're very understanding and happy to pay it because they're loyal customers to me. OK. Dominic, thank you Not very much. much. And uh, it's worth saying that this does come at a time where household budgets are really being squeezed. As I was saying, uh, energy bills have already gone up. Uh, they're expected to go up even more in April when the price cap is expected to, to rise. Uh, the average, uh, sorry, regulated rail fares in England uh, are going up in March. And uh, people will also be paying more in national insurance in April as well. So um, if you're affected by this, we are keen to hear from you. Get in touch with uh, us, uh, usual breakfast email or on social media. We're keen to hear your stories and how you're dealing with it and the effect it's having on your lives day to day at home. Ben, thanks very much indeed. Brilliant look around the market this morning with yeah, Ben. I know it's that. a bit rainy. I particularly like the look of that fudge. Yeah, the look. Mars and Maltese. <laughs> I can see your eyes wide, didn't we?